The Department of Human Genetics is situated on the Health Science Campus Gastersberg in Leuven. That campus combines one of the largest university hospitals with state-of-the-art facilities for basic and translational biomedical research and for clinical trials. In the department we distinguish five broad research axes. We try to understand how the genome works all the regulatory levels and using different types of models including cell lines, animal models, but also where it's appropriate human subjects. In order to do that, we also invest a considerable effort in developing new technologies, both at genomics technology level and at the bioinformatic level. We actually try to understand what is the genetic variation in humans. We do that by studying human evolution, complex genetics of disease, but also by developing novel statistical methods. We as a department try to help people and educate people to reflect better on the issues at hand and even to, to support legislation wherever appropriate. The aim of the Centre of Human Genetics is to provide um, high quality medical services in all fields of clinical genetics and genetic diagnostics. We do that for heritable disorders, both in a prenatal and a postnatal context, but also for genetic variants in neoplastic disorders. Diagnosing, counseling and guiding patients and their families. Clinical geneticists work very closely together with laboratory geneticists. We have had a leading position in developing clinical guidelines uh, for the implementation of novel technologies and novel genetic tests in Belgium. The focus of my research is on imaging genetics, which is essentially the use of imaging technologies in combination with genetic variation. So we're trying to understand variation in the larger population in imaging phenotypes driven by genetic factors. So I've been taking facial images and brain images and analyzing the genetic factors or the genetic architecture of facial shape and brain shape. We can use these tools to assess or to help a clinician to diagnose certain um, deformations or deviations from normal growth and development. Using these technologies, we have been investigating scientific questions from an evolutionary perspective. But also I'm interested in having an impact on the forensic uh, application. So assume you're finding some blood or DNA on a crime scene, and if I can extract DNA information out of this uh, sample left behind, can I, can I deduct a photograph basically from the crime scene? In our genome, we have about 20,000 genes and around 2 million regulatory sequences, control elements that are scattered around the genome and these regulatory elements they uh, control the expression of all these genes and this is different in every cell type in our body. There are transcription factors, these are a special type of protein. About 10% of our genes code for transcription factors and these bind to these control elements and basically read out the regulatory sequence to deliver the genes for that cell type. And so the research in my lab focuses on understanding how these control mechanisms are implemented in the genome code and how it evolves between species and also how this impacts, for example, disease. There are a number of large consortia in Europe and in the world we are also involved in, for example, the Lifetime Consortium. We're using single cell technologies, the idea is to go and find the tipping point of disease, which cell type is really changing as the disease is onsetting and what is the mechanism there. The human body contains approximately 40 trillion cells that have to work together in order to exert organ function. And our laboratory develops technologies to investigate these individual cells. We actually use multi-ohm technologies, and this is where we are world experts, profiling both the genome and the transcriptome of individual cells, also the epigenome and the transcriptome of individual cells. We have installed the K.O. Leuven Institute for Single Cell Omics to allow this uh, interdisciplinary method development, but also the interdisciplinary application of these methodologies with our top biologists, top clinicians that are present here in the University Hospital, and to actually bring the next step and, and the breakthrough uh, in, in understanding the diseases and also develop actually the, the new therapies. We try to identify the causes of leukemia. Uh, we look at the mutations or the changes that occur in the DNA of the leukemia cells and in this way try to identify the most important changes that occur there. We then use those mutations to try to develop novel cell-based models and also mouse models of leukemia development to completely understand how such specific mutations can play a role in leukemia development. We can do everything from the diagnosis to the research and potentially also to follow up of treatment of the patients. We have a very strong and good interaction 
with the pediatric oncology department here from our hospital. We have a diagnostic center in our center of human genetics and we do the research on the same samples, uh, trying to find out better ways to treat the patients, better ways to diagnose them. Now we push the technology of RACGH, a later sequencing technology, to map variation in single cells. And we are using that to investigate human embryos to enable embryo selection, avoid the transmission of pathogenic alleles. So we're now isolating in vitro fertilizing embryos, taking one in single cell at day three or at day five, and doing a whole genome analysis, not just sequencing, but also genotyping, which allows us to determine the complete genotype of the embryo. And that's been implemented in the clinic. We have been pushing the technology of liquid biopsies by taking a blood sample from an individual or a pregnant woman. We're not only able to detect copy number variations which are caused by fetuses or by cancers, we can also deduce by the small changes in the patterns, we can deduce whether somebody is healthy or not. We can deduce whether somebody is compromised to have a cancer soon but doesn't know yet. It's called the fragmentomics field. This is going to change life sciences. We want to continue to, to be at the forefront of human genetics research. We will continue to invest in new technologies and we're also looking for motivated, exciting people to work with.